Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing issues that I've personally wrestled with with regard to the faith, and today, we'll discuss the fate of free will in heaven. We'll begin with a look at some verses related to this, and then see how much we can figure out about this issue. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Amen, amen, I say unto you, the Son cannot do anything of himself, but what he seeth the Father doing. For what things soever he doth, these the Son also doth in like manner. John 5.19 If you took this to refer to people who've been baptized in general, it would sound kind of bad, but this verse doesn't refer to all the baptized when it says the Son. Son is capitalized here, a proper title, intended to refer only to Jesus, showing how the persons of the Trinity are perfectly united in action. It doesn't refer to those who are made sons of God through baptism. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away the things of a child. We see now through a glass in a dark manner, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then... I shall know even as I am known. 1 Corinthians 13, to 12 St. Paul uses these verses only to illustrate how our awareness can change and develop over time, and how many more things we'd be made aware of between this life and heaven. He doesn't mean that the things we enjoy as children or as adults we won't be able to enjoy in heaven. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then the Son also himself shall be subject unto him that put all things under him that God may be all in all. 1 Corinthians 15.28 This verse may be the most troubling with regard to the issue of free will. St. Paul often uses imprecise terminology or makes statements that seem to contradict obvious truths of the faith, if you take them at face value. And if being with God caused people to become more subdued in personality, for example, that would seem to contradict the idea that heaven is a place where things become better as a result of being associated with God. In fact, being more subdued would just make people less interesting and overall fun. However, that's not what the word means in this context. In this instance, the word subdued means something closer to conquered, overpowered, etc. As we discussed in the last episode, God is a fire who consumes evil things, so that's a pretty good description of what it means to be subdued unto God. He consumes what's evil and leaves behind what's good. Now, this is not against the will of the saints, because the saints made their choice in this life to do the will of God, which means they're willing to cooperate with his plan. Therefore, God is doing their will by removing their temptations and weaknesses. But, you might say, what if a person decided to pursue holiness out of a desire to be a pirate forever or some such thing? Their dreams are filled with conflict and other things that in this life might lead them into sin. However, they decide to put those dreams on hold because they believe in God and want to save it for the next life. What happens to them? Do they still have their own wills in heaven? The issue of the will to do otherwise forbidden acts is a large topic, and we'll be going into it in greater depth in upcoming episodes, but the short answer is that many things which are sins here will not be possible as sins in heaven. For instance, you can't murder people in heaven because people in heaven are immortal. However, you could, in theory, go through the same actions as though you were murdering someone, and it wouldn't be murder because the person wouldn't die and you'd know that. I want to address this issue in greater detail in another episode, the issue of how eternal life and the close presence of God affect what's a sin and what isn't. But I think, based on this information, we can suppose that the saints are able to have their dreams fulfilled, but without needing to sin in order to get that. That covers, generally, the issues related to the preservation of the self. Next time, a look at what the Bible authors meant by heart. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.